Hey, welcome to Just Calvin. Uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, my interview today uh, got, uh, I'm not sure if if we had the timing wrong or what was going on. I can't, I think, I think she's in, uh, in, I want to say Maryland, but maybe she's, well, maybe, no, in that case, she's in Texas, I thought. Anyway, um, uh, for right now, the interview is off uh, until we reschedule. Because if member served me, the link I sent to her to join me here was for the uh, for my time zone, not uh, not her. So I would think that maybe, and because the computer I'm I'm talking to you on now, um, uh, it says like say eleven forty right now there on the west coast, and I'm guessing if she's in Texas, for instance. That would be it'd be eleven forty there, but I could be wrong about that. So I want to find out what happens there. Anyway, I um, I I kind of got to thinking about um about voting and other things like that. I'm not really sure how you can vote. Uh, you know, vote for Democrat or Republican if you don't if you don't see yourself as either one, and especially if you're independent. And in most in most states, I don't think independents can actually vote in primaries um so my my i mean i'm not trying to discourage anybody from voting please do please, please vote for whoever you want but i'm not seeing the point of if you're so against um voting for democrats or republicans and you are so against this whole um lesser to evil um paradigm uh then i would suggest that uh maybe those who are talking about it, like myself um should be more inclined to making sure that open primaries are happening and third parties are involved otherwise I, we're just perpetuating the two-party system if we vote as far as that part goes um and also getting rain choice voting as a thing so if i i sincerely do think that if you are in a a uh, state that has a closed primary that, that means that uh, like in New York, I believe they only allow Democrats or Republicans to run in primaries. Um, I would suggest that you do everything you can in, you know, in between to get um, open primaries as a, as a uh, initiative to be put on the ballot see if it gets voted in if it does then the likelihood of it becoming law is better uh same thing with uh ranked choice voting but if we're just perpetuating this current system uh we're not doing anybody any good so i would suggest and i myself i would be practicing my preach i will not be voting uh this coming midterm um, however, I will be calling out and reminding people uh, in pretty much anywhere in the world or anywhere in the country, I should say, about uh, who has um, a page on Open Secrets. Because remember, my new thing is if the candidate has a page on Open Secrets, that's a candidate you don't want to vote for. Uh, simply put, as far as that part goes. And now, as far as COVID, um, I've been trying to stop talking about COVID, but things get, things are getting weirder and weirder and weirder when it comes to it, because from what I can see, uh, places like Yahoo are now promoting the fact that it's, gr it's good to be naturally uh, infected, but you should also get, uh, you should also get the vaccine uh, because that will, that will protect you in the long term. But last I checked, uh, your body has memory. Your body remembers infections. That's why when, say if you get injured at some point and you break a bone or you tear a muscle or something like that, later on, you're going to start hurting from that same region because your body remembers the hurt from there. So it just I guess it just depends on uh, the time frame. I'm not sure if it's like the body's anniversary of that happening, but I I know, for instance, for the last few weeks, I've been feeling the what I used to do as a kid, and my arms, my back, you name it. That's the reason why 
uh, the older you get, uh, the less, <laughs> less, less able body you become to a certain degree, unless you stretch and, you know, stay athletic, you know, that sort of thing. But, you know, calm it down a little bit as you get older, if you feel, if you feel that way. So just remember, and, I, and apparently it's a, uh, it's a uh, grade school biology or science, whichever, whichever. Uh, states that if you if you have gotten the common cold and you, your body remembers it, it knows how to fight it off. So it's the same deal as far as this part goes. Um, I have also, but I did uh, I did read an article yesterday that, um, if memory serves me, uh, said that despite protein by itself binds uh, your T cells or binds uh, the, your, your cells, which means it is unable to produce other cells that make up the immune system. So when you get um, infections, your body is, is less likely to be able to have the memory to be able to fight it off or have the capability of fighting it off. That's why it's, in a lot of cases, people are unable to fight it and pass away from other reasons. Like Colin Powell, for instance, he had a rare blood uh, cancer that prevented it, that, that prevented T cells from being mass produced in order to be able to fight the infection. Um, not to say that he would have survived either way, but uh, that's what the infection does as far as that part goes. Um, but the first thing that people wanted to do was say he died from complications of COVID-19 when in reality, um, he died from complications from the cancer he was fighting. It wasn't COVID. He was, but he was just diagnosed as COVID. Uh, that's what happens in a lot of these cases. I noticed over the past few, over the last year and a half. And for a headline narrative, a lot of uh, MSM um, uh, platforms want to blame COVID. When in reality, if you look at, if you look deep, the person has some other kind of uh health issue uh there was a few conservative uh uh people that died but they had underlying health issues and if the spike protein is exactly what i read it prevents from healthy t cells from being produced uh it goes the opposite of what Fauci said um but anyway that's my little part on that now a um, little wrestling um Apparently, uh, Friday night, uh, WWE had the last to see uh, what was put on Fox Sports 1, where it's not usually on. So, the, you know, less people, I guess, watched it as far as that part goes. But AEW, which usually goes live anyway on Fridays, if memory serves me right on that, beat uh, WWE SmackDown head-to-head -head, uh, for the last half hour of the show. That's how ha last half hour of the show on SmackDown, they have Brock Lesnar, who... I stopped being a fan of a long time ago because they, he's a he, he's a big he's a big money contract. He's not used he he, he doesn't he, he he's not used very often because he he chooses not to be used that often. Uh, he's now considered an attraction, um, which to me attractions are okay. You see my WrestleMania, kind of like what Undertaker was doing. Uh, that's a little more special as far as that part goes. But anyway. So Brock Lesnar contract signed with uh, with Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns finds out that Brock Lesnar is uh, claiming that Paul Heyman, uh, who is the sole reason why uh, Roman Reigns is a heel right now, um, uh, is his act, uh, advocate. Uh, during uh, Since during the contract signing, Roman Reigns pretty much called Brock Lesnar a fool for not reading it and all that stuff. Uh, and that's when Brock Lesnar said that, no, I've read it along with my advocate, Paul Heyman. So it creates a little dissension there like they have been. The problem is they, my problem with the whole thing is the fact that they have quite literally shoved Roman Reigns down our throats for so long that they literally had to put Paul Heyman with him because Paul Heyman is a natural heat magnet. He, he just, he oozes that. So uh, they put, they put Roman Reigns with him I mean, Paul Heyman made Roman Reigns regards to uh, the heel turn. He made him. And now uh, it, it looks like Paul Heyman's going to go back with Brock Lesnar. Maybe. I don't know, obviously, but it looks that way. 
And then now it looks like I think a bloodline. I, th- I think they went to uh, Raw as far as the tag team. Maybe they got traded back. Who knows? I forgot. I don't. I don't watch uh, WWE that much because to me, um, WWE became complacent uh, because they hadn't had direct competition in the last twenty something twenty years. So they got complacent. Another product. Uh, they let people like Braun Strowman, Bray Wyatt. And other people go who could have been top stars, uh, but creative uh, had, didn't have anything uh, that I suppose was good enough to Vince McMahon, who was the final say in everything in regards to the company. So this has told me that, that Vince McMahon is, is definitely stuck in the 80s and 90s and can't get his head around freaking 2000s. Um, it sounds like and it seems like they're trying to go back to the attitude era. Well, there's a reason why there's no double, there's no going back to a former era because it served its purpose and the, and the time is around, but it became complacent and became overdone. And, you know, it, that era ended because it, it, it ran through its own course. Same thing with the Hulk Hogan's in the world, the Rock's the world. And of course, the Rock can still go, apparently, but. He's too busy with Hollywood and, and thinking about running for president. Um, anyway, my point being is the very big difference between WCW, WWE, and how they treat um, their, uh, their storylines and all that, even though I didn't say WCW, but a lot of people are, are looking at AEW as kind of like the resurrection portion of what WCW was, or at least Eric Bischoff and other people have said that. Uh, to a certain degree, I mean, um, because the same production, same people running production. I mean, um, very big difference is uh, the people that Eric Bischoff brought in to make a name for WCW or a bigger name that is, were ones there were people who were already established by WWE. Um, these days, uh, they are they quite literally. Uh, did a bigger version of what NXT had to do at some point, and that is bring those same indie, uh, as Kevin Nash would call them, indie riffic people in and build the brand. Now, because uh, WWE decided to try to go head to head with AEW, uh, I guess uh, USA uh, moved uh, NXT to Wednesdays when they were on Tuesdays, I think, or some to that effect. Um, AEW kicked their butts like every week. So I guess Mr. Man had to go to uh, to people at, at uh, USA and go, you know what, let's go to Wednesdays. Um, and a lot of things that AEW was doing was tongue in cheek. I mean, like 98% of it. Uh, they even had but uh, John Moxley come in and the, and the Bucks would do what the Shield did. And John Moxley looks at that and stood there for a couple of seconds and leaves. So, I mean, everything they were doing were uh, tongue-in-cheek. What WB was doing was direct uh, assault, or not direct assault, uh, direct insult. Um, they had these street profits uh, carry around these, like, party party cups. I mean, that's not even part of their gimmick. Uh, the only gimmick that goes with is private party in AEW. Um, and for, who was it? Oh, there was there was some inside things that certain re- certain wrestlers I can't remember who they were, but certain wrestlers did that were that were directed towards AEW. So I mean AEW isn't like they were directing this shit towards me, but they, they were making fun of their own past as far as the Cody Rhodes and and uh, and the throne. He was making fun of his own past because he's, he 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 wasn't going to become king of WWE. That would be Triple H. So. But at that time, at least. Anyway, my point being is the fact that AEW is building the brand based on indie wrestlers, fresh, up and coming wrestlers that can do what no WWE stars can do as far as that part goes, and have a and have consistent performances, consistent storylines. Uh, overall, anyway, about ninety percent are consistent storylines. There are a few that uh, there are a few that didn't go as far, uh, but. A lot of times there were logical conclusions to them. Um, great fights, uh, great wrestling matches, whether it be hardcore or regular matches, um, where WWE, I mean, they're still, as far as I'm concerned, they're still stuck within the cartoon era. And so that it, lo- it seemed like they're trying to combine the cartoon era with the attitude era. 
it's not going to happen as far as I can see, but maybe I'm wrong about this. I've, been, I've only been watching Wrestling Stars 4 since 84 in that case. Um, but yeah, so in other words, AEW beat SmackDown in the, uh, the 1849 demo, which is the demo that um, that advertisers want because that is the demos that buy products. So AEW has been, yeah, been kind of beating WWE in that for, for a while now. Um, I think they only got beat a couple of times in that, but not very much in the past, what, year? Um, AEW was also the first ones to bring back fans. And they were nicest to the fans because every night they literally send the folks happy, uh, home happy, whether it be a wrestler getting on a mic and saying thank you to the storyline ending in, the, in a, a favorable um, or a, a favorable light or a, um, a logical conclusion or logical continuation of a, of a, of a storyline. Uh, from what I saw earlier online on YouTube, uh, Charlotte Flair was having a bang, uh, was having a hell of a, a match with Bianca. With Bianca uh, oh, I forgot her name, last name, Bianca something. Um, and it was a great match, but it, but it wound up ending in a DQ. That's a stupid, that, that, why? I can see a cow now with them fighting. Okay, that's logical, but Rick, with Rick Flair's daughter coming with a freaking chair and knocking someone in the stomach, for what reason? There, there was no reason for it as far as I can see. But anyway, but this is the reason why I'm not a fan of WWE anymore because they bring back the same people and they put them in the dumbest fucking storylines. I mean, Becky Lynch should have came back as a fan favorite, then turned on uh, Bianca Belair. They, okay, yeah, Belair, yeah. Doing that, fine, but not until after the match. I mean, come on. She came back from what? How, for from how many months of being on maternity leave, having a child? You can, she comes back and she's the heel all of a sudden. That makes no freaking sense at all. Um, so a lot of stuff they're doing is making no sense to me. Um, this is why I'm in. This is why I'm so into AEW. It's not because it's a cult. It's because their product to me is better right now. And apparently that's showing in ticket sales because ticket because because they put out seven thousand tickets for a couple of small venues and they sold out. And WWE is doing the same thing, but for bigger venues, they're selling maybe three thousand, four thousand. That's even after they put Roman Reigns uh, as the special guest. Anyway, subscribe to this channel if you like it, um, and I'll be back on later on for uh, Anchor. Uh, thanks for watching. Peace out for now. And I think logically as far as voting, if, you, if nobody that you want is, is, uh, is a viable candidate or even being a candidate and your third party is not being represented, I don't see the harm in not voting. But these, this is me. Uh, either way, get ranked choice voting going and get open primaries going. Um, and make sure that they are a part of the voting system in your state. Peace out for now.